My name is Alex Smith, senior analyst for Canalys. I want to welcome you to this uh, morning session. So we saw Chad this morning at the EMC keynote talk about some of the innovati innovative things that EMC is doing. But one of the things he mentioned at the end is that they also have to innovate in partner programs. And I think for everyone in the room, it's very important that vendors have you know, good partner programs in place because that's ultimately how they're going to work with you, the channel community. So EMC recently announced that they're going to launch a whole new business partner program, which is going to go live uh, this coming January. And all the way from Seattle, we have uh, Fred Kahoot, VP Global Partner Marketing. He's going to tell you some details about the new business partner program. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Excellent. All right. So welcome to, first of all, welcome to Canalis 2015 in Asia Pacific. This is my uh, third stop on the Canalis Roadshow. Uh, I was at the conference in uh, EMEA, the conference in Latin America, in Brazil, and uh, here now in Shanghai. So I'm just about worn out. I have about another day or two left in me, and then I'm going to fall over, I think. But uh, they've all been great conferences. Um, it's just an absolute um, uh, positive to be able to get together with you and interact with you all in such a very concentrated amount of time and get your feedback. And part of what we've been talking about at all of the Canalis conferences is the new business partner program. So I'm going to spend today to give you some context to what motivated the change in that program. And how do we see the landscape changing within the IT industry that maybe makes you think about how you need to change your business or what are the factors that may impact your business going forward? How are you looking at a partner program to facilitate that? and set you up and arm you for the future. So first of all, if you've listened to the keynote speakers just a little while ago, and certainly as you peruse the landscape of the IT industry now daily, you can get the sense, the very real sense, that we're in the midst of a, a very, very large transformation within the industry. It's sweeping. It's all-encompassing. It's turning any number of things upside down. It's really predicated upon the fact that it's a generational change. We've seen this happen before. Probably this go round at a magnitude that we, haven't, we really just haven't imagined. So we started a couple generations ago with the mainframe platform, very static, terminal-based, very rigid, closed and proprietary. That gave way to the client server and PC networking platform much more open, distributed. We begin to see uh, the, the notion of networking and networks proliferate, and certainly access to information and becoming more application-centric and application-based. And then all of a sudden, we start to see the emergence of the internet, and then what has lent itself over the last 10 years is as networking and compute have become more and more pervasive and cheaper to acquire and operate, we now find ourselves in the midst of a brand new way of thinking about computing. And it's predicated upon some, some basic uh, uh, principles here, which, is, which are around mobile, cloud, uh, big data, and, and social networks. And all of these combine to create a different way to access information through your mobile device, a different way to consume IT infrastructure resources through this notion of cloud, right? The ability now to pool large data sets or data lakes and run analytics against them and drive faster time to decision. And then certainly this notion of, of social platforms, which I think is really two-dimensional here. Number one, they create a huge amount of unstructured data, which lends itself to some of the changes that we're going through. But number two, it also changes how we work and how our clients and our customers want to work. And so progressively, what we've gone through is a step function scale in both the users and the applications. And now we begin to talk about, when somebody has a new application, we begin to talk about billions of people accessing, right? Not millions. So scale has changed. And with that scale change, we have to think about how we change in our approach to the market. Now, there's another dynamic that's happening, and that, that's quickly 
encompassed on that uh, other side of the screen, and that is there's this notion of, of a partner type that is rapidly dissolving. We used to think and work with each other in very rigid silos. You were a reseller, you were a distributor, you were a system integrator, and we interacted with you that way, and we set up our contractual agreements that way, and we had requirements and benefits associated that way. Well, what we begin to see now is that there are hybrid models emerging, and that sort of fits hand in glove with the changes that are underway. So now you can have a system integrator that's a reseller that is a cloud service provider. And we have more than one instance of that in our relationship with partners around the world. And what we're hearing from the industry and what we see in the industry is that we need to have the ability to work with you in a more flexible way. We need to be able to comprehend that you might have multiple business models and that you'll have different go-to-market engagements as a result. And if you're in a system integrator role, we can't treat you like a value-added reseller. And if you're a cloud service provider, you're not really too interested in requirements and benefits around certifications and accreditations. You're more interested in a go-to-market engagement. So that's some of the context behind how we begin to think about changing the program. So before we get to the program, let's talk a little bit about some things you might want to be considering in your business. If you, if you accept that we're in the midst of this transformation, what does that mean to you and your business potentially? So first of all, as we move up those platform stacks and we become immersed in cloud, big data, social, we need to start to think about what are we doing to equip ourselves to run or set up or deliver software-defined storage and software-defined data centers. I think you heard Chad speak just a little while ago about the fact that more and more clients will look for or ask for white box infrastructure. What they're really interested in is the orchestration and the management layer on top of that. So as partners, what are you thinking about? How are you thinking how you build out your competencies around software defined? Because that will become a value added service or delivery going forward. On the third platform notion, if people are buying hybrid clouds and or they are asking you to broker from on-prem to off-prem, you're going to need to be conversant and be able to deliver services around or capability around a couple of different areas. First of all, should you or could you have an application development group? As Chad likes to call them, those applications are built very rapidly, consumed, and if they break, you shoot them. But the notion here is you'll need to deliver application value in that third platform, whether you build it you integrate it, or you have some sort of service level north stack, as Chad likes to say, delivered upon it. So this is absolutely key. Solutions focused. Still within that infrastructure space, how are you going to deliver then solutions on top of converged infrastructure? If more and more of the industry and your clients are moving to a desire to buy converged infrastructure, and some of your integration service delivery begins to erode or go away, what are the solutions you're going to deliver on top of that? Are you going to become conversant in SAP and have an SAP practice, for example, or Oracle or Microsoft? So that notion of delivering infrastructure, integrating it on service, and having value in just that uh, sort of tightly defined motion is going to also start to erode. And your, your ability to come in and actually implement the workload software, tune that workload software is going to be of great value to your clients. And finally, relationship dynamics. Certainly, we'll find the industry or your clients, our, our prospects, beginning to choose 
and make strategic decisions around fewer and fewer vendors. And I, I think it's pertinent that we do an evaluation of who we're going to go to market with, what's the profitability associated with that. And I think, my sense is, we're all going to start to place bets on who we go to market with. The number of hardware vendors is not increasing, it's decreasing. The notion of converged infrastructure leads you to perhaps fewer choices in the industry as just one example. So the market dynamics are changing. And that's leading to maybe some considerations on your part of what you do in your business. Now, at the same time, from a vendor standpoint, you know, the partner ecosystem is growing and becoming more dynamic. You know, again, we used to look at things in, in very tight silos as a manufacturer, and that's no longer the case. Certainly here in Asia Pacific, we have to comprehend a broader and broader set of software partners that all go to market with us or all have the ability to take us to market. And so today at EMC, we have begun to open up our aperture and think about that more holistically. And certainly that was part of the thinking and how we reconstructed uh, a partner program. But in all of these instances, you may have partners that are classified in different ways that work with each other to take your solution to market as a vendor. And so you have to uh, give that flexibility and that ability to partner within the ecosystem, uh, within the program. So implications for the partner program, you need to be relevant to different segments and different types of partners. And you've got to reward partners on the skills that are becoming valued, that are emerging uh, in the years ahead. So with that as the backdrop, now let's kind of piece through, all right, what do we do and how do we think about a partner program at EMC? First thing is, we built this program based on partner feedback. We run very rigorous advisory boards in all three theaters. We engage with key partners on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We run focus groups. We took all of that feedback on board and we refined and tuned that program based on the feedback that we got. A couple of thematic things emerge. First of all, partners asked us to give them flexibility and choice, meaning don't lock me into one type of business model. Let me flow across business models the way the market kind of pulls me. Second, be more solutions and services oriented. You know, that's where the value is going to be. Help us get there and certainly enable us to deliver value there. Support for the third platform, give us the ability to either network and, and play in that fast growing space or give us the tool set to establish ourselves in that space. And as always, sort of underpinning every uh, partner engagement, make it simple, predictable, and profitable. And some of those are, are a little bit tricky when you begin to look across different type of uh, business models and engagements. So this is sort of our architecture uh, slide or depiction of the partner program at EMC. And I'll, I'll start from the bottom and build up and kind of give you a glimpse of where we think we have some unique attributes and the context for why we think it plays well. So the first thing I want to let you know is that with EMC, you have the opportunity to have multiple business models and engage with us on those different type of business models and be rewarded for it. Secondly, we're going to make it as easy and as simple as we can for you to do that. Third, we're going to drive links and connections to the Federation Company programs. Now, we think that's kind of unique in the industry today. So those other companies, VMware, Pivotal, uh, VCE, RSA, all have their own unique standalone partner program. And they should, because they have different business models and different value propositions into the marketplace. What we want to do is make and build the links between those partner programs so that as you establish a relationship with one of those companies, you can leverage investments there 
into another Federation company. So this is a long journey. These are uh, the initial steps we've taken. Uh, we stepped back, absolutely rewrote everything, like what we like to say was a clean sheet design. Uh, we think this is the architecture for the next decade for the partner program at EMC. The last time we changed the program was about 12 years ago. So from the bottom up, at EMC we had multiple programs in the company. We had a program for VARs, we had a program for OEMs, and so on and so forth. All of them had different taxonomies, different structures, and different ways of operating. So the first thing we did is we built a common taxonomy for all programs. And that's based on this notion of tiering and attainment of tiers based on certain criteria. The second thing we did is we began to build bridges between tracks. So as you get skilled and accredited in one track, if there's applicability to another one, we'll give you credit for it. You don't have to take the same training twice. You don't have to pass through the same hoop again. So that means you lower your investments and you leverage your skill. Third, we build financial benefits across those tracks. So specifically, within the EMC II track, the storage business, as you earn co-op and MDF, we allow you to use that in different tracks that you may participate in. And the notion there is, as you're establishing other businesses, we want to give you the capability to invest in that. And then, as I mentioned, we build links into the federation companies, VCE, Pivotal, VMware, and RSA. And in this instance, it's very simple in its initial stages. Number one, are there accreditations in those programs that we can give you credit for in the EMC program? Training, whether it's pre-sales, sales, or technical uh, architect. Third, are there additional financial benefits we can give you as you sell solutions based on those Federation technologies. Those are the first steps. We see and have a roadmap that's beginning to emerge about how we get to one set of joint de jointly developed training and accreditation materials. So you take it once, you get credit everywhere. We see this notion of building um, stackable rebates across solutions growing over time. So first steps within the program, but the notion here is if you are going to invest in EMC and invest in the Federation companies, we need to find a way to make that financially rewarding for you. We need to find a way to make it easier for you to do business the more broadly you want to do business with EMC. All of that faces up into the strategy around cloud, big data, and trust. And this is something I'm particularly passionate about. If we're not exposing our entire IP portfolio with and through you to the marketplace, then we're not really maximizing our ability to, to harvest or monetize that IP. So we have a very clear expression here that our goal is to make sure that you can access and take to market all of the EMC and the Federation IP. Based on the different type of engagement you have or the different go-to-market motion, we're dialing up and down different levers within the programs or the tracks. So where there are product is the, me the main lead and go-to-market, that's where we emphasize uh, things like rebates and certifications and accreditations. For other tracks, there's more of an orientation toward how we engage on the services side, and then finally on the solutions end. So we look at all of these factors, we kind of tune them according to your go-to-market and the type of partner profile you, um, that you want to take to market. So what's new? This is a laundry list. So you can see it was an exhaustive rewrite of the program. Uh, from program through track, benefits and requirements. The first thing we did, and it Kind of feels like old news now, but as of January, we got rid of the Velocity brand. And some of you may remember that. That's the brand that had been in the market for quite some time. And what partners told us is, hey, we really go to market with EMC. And that's the brand we want to be associated with. So we retired Velocity 
and we launched the new EMC business partner program. So everything under one shield, everything under one brand leveraging EMC. Um, we've simplified all the tracks as much as we can where we can to make this uh, a much lighter lift and how we go to market together. Uh, and, and we certainly have looked at how we can drive cross-track benefits accordingly. So foundation to the program is really this notion of tiering and acquiring uh, benefits associated with how you tier in a program. Uh, within the solution provider or the reseller track, which is what we're seeing here, these three tiers, silver, gold, and platinum, have different levels of value or certification associated with them. So on silver tier, this is really where you're taking a technology foundational approach to the marketplace, more closely associated with product expertise and competency. And then as you get into the gold tier, we start to bring solutions into the mix. And we actually have solutions that we ask our partners to get skilled up on, not only in sales and pre-sales, but also in implementation and, and architecture. We started with two. We'll be moving through a roadmap of solutions uh, over the course of next year. And then on the platinum end, this is really where we have technical expertise and, and it's recognized uh, within the industry. That platinum tier is a very small so, uh, select set of partners within each territory. We believe that this is the tier where the partners tend to have the capital and the capability to be in all of the federation companies or many of the federation companies and will bring those integrated solutions to market. Within each tier, five criteria. Again, getting very methodical in our approach makes it simple for you. So technical competency, solutions competency, marketing services, and certainly the revenue uh, thresholds. Marketing is a new entrant into these criteria. And this was predicated on the fact that we think there is much uh, uh, of a shift going on in the marketing landscape as there is on the sales and technical side. How you market is changing as rapidly as what solutions you have to invest in to bring to market. We've built an academy around this. We have competencies associated with it. And we certainly have requirements for it in the program. So as you move up tiers, it makes sense that Certainly your rebates or your financial rewards grow accordingly. On the solution provider side, we have vastly simplified the program structure. So there is just one goal attainment form. There used to be multiple across different product lines. There's just one. You earn from dollar one. That's highly predictable and, and uh, ultimately we think more profitable. You have now services included in this program that you did not used to have. So we are exposing and bringing to market with you now more of our value-added services through the Global Services Organization, consulting services as one example. So we're going to open up the services portfolio and allow you to resell and implement. Products and solutions, meaning you have both the ability to just take the products to market, if that is what you'd like to do, or to move up into a solution competency. Marketing support and federation benefits as we've outlined. We have done a lot of work on the back end of the program. There used to be 47 different sites at EMC by which you could access information as a partner. We've got it down now to one. You have a single sign-on. You have one portal into your partner experience with EMC. It's vastly easier, simplified. This will become your enablement center going forward. On the uh, Business Partner Academy side, we have taken all of the training certifications accreditations that existed within uh, EMC, and we have joined that up into one location. Again, access through a single portal. You can find out what requirements and benefits, or excuse me, what requirements there are for different tracks and even within different federation companies. So you can have a sense of what's required. We're going to centralize 
all of that training within this Business Partner Academy. So again, very simple engagement, very easy, should lower your cost of, uh, of doing business with EMC. Um, reaction's been great so far around the industry. We're happy to see that. I think uh, Canalis has given us, generally speaking, a thumbs up, although we're always working with them on that. Uh, but it's been great. And we take analyst feedback on board, definitely. Uh, and they represent you very, very well in those engagements. So in summary, when you're thinking about the EMC Business Partner Program, a couple things I want to leave you with. First of all, this program architecture is really set up for the next decade. Secondly, this is all about how we work together to comprehend the changes are in, that are underway and get you set up to take advantage of those changes and adapt your business accordingly. Flexible, choice for you and how you go to market or how you want to engage with EMC, solutions and services oriented, so moving up stack, helping you move up that profitability chain. Federation leverage, we think that's pretty unique in the industry today. And simple, predictable, and profitable. Thank you very much. Oh, and then Alex is going to come up. We're going to open it up for Q&A. So Alex is going to get started with me, and then I think we have some more, yeah? Yeah. Thank you, Fred. Thanks. So we've got a bit more time left, and before we let Fred go, we want to ask him a couple questions. I'm going to start opening up, but we have a microphone going around the audience, so um, please have some questions um, ready for Fred. Please. <laughs> that was sort of a plea, I think. <laughs> so I want to start off, maybe lift the hood a little bit on EMC. You know, we look back many years, it was a very direct company, yep. um, but now you know, we've seen that needle move increasingly towards the channel, um, and now you've revamped your program for the first time in 12 years. Is the channel fully appreciated from top down across all the sales organizations. Can you talk a little bit about Sure, sure. I, so I've been at EMC about three and a half years. And I, I suppose that I might have a, a slightly different perspective than many of you in that I've only seen EMC moving toward a partner orientation in, in this last three and a half years. And I think the moves have been rather dramatic. So, you know, there's a, there's a part of me that wants to say, look, this discussion about whether or not EMC is partner-oriented or not is like five or six years old. Uh, the company does the majority of its product revenue through the partner community. I mean, that's just, that's just a fact. And APJ, as you heard Chad talk about, it's 80% or more of product revenue flows through the partner community. Um, it's clearly understood that our success is how we scale and how we work with partners in delivering value locally. And that's certainly reflected in the time and effort it's taken to restructure the program. So the final point I'd say in terms of, you know, is the channel recognized or appreciated with the company is you don't take this level or make this level of effort to change your program. You don't expressly figure out ways to make your program more profitable if you don't figure that's your route to market over time. So we're all in, and if you're looking to partner with EMC, I don't think there's a better, been a better time to do it, frankly. Mm -hmm. In your new program, you talked a bit about solutions that came up a couple of times as one of the important aspects of your program. Can you talk a bit more about that? Are, are, is EMC going to be defining the solutions, or is there going to be opportunities for partners to define? To those? do them as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So I, I'd answer that in two ways. We are going to construct a series of solutions that will configure, test, maybe even skew, depends upon the type of, of so, a solution it is, and we'll make those available to you. Now, an important thing to note is that the same material and constructs that we use with the EMC Direct Sales Force and SE community that Chad represents we're going to be making that same material available to all of our partners. So there's no distinction in how we build enablement or readiness. That's number one. Number two is those solutions will be uh, highly supported from EMC from a go-to-market standpoint. So you're going to have all of EMC in the market with you pushing 
those identified solutions. So that's a good thing. They'll be embedded into the tiers of the program, so as you become skilled on solutions, you have the opportunity to earn more. And then finally, the notion of you building your own or adding on to that is entirely the way to go. Now, we're not necessarily going to expose an API you know, purposefully to, to sort of set that up as much as we want to give you the capability to add services on top of that by thinking in terms of application workloads or integration services around converged infrastructure. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. I want to move tax a bit. Federation, that obviously is something that yep. EMC is very unique in the industry. Um, one question that Chad didn't get to answer that was put on stage was who leads the Federation? And I thought that was you know, an interesting question. Yep. And I, maybe you want to have a stab at that? So, you know, I'm, I, I don't get involved a lot in the Federation besides through the construct of this partner program. But I know that Joe Tucci, who runs the Federation companies, has a management board and they meet on a regular basis. And that management board is constructed of representatives from all the Federation companies. And so they chart the course and they make decisions on how we want to move together accordingly. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's a who's in the lead. I think what's the governance, and it's through that management board. Mm -hmm. And then from your perspective, partners that want to engage with federation companies, you know, the EMC channel organization will help partners. Um, Absolutely. Uh, we can be your broker to do that. That's number one. Number two is we have to go work, just to underscore the point. We have to go work with the federation companies to build these links. We can't unilaterally say, hey, VMware, we're going to make this change, and it's going to affect your program this way, and it's great news. Now, we have to sit with Dave O'Callaghan and his staff, and we have to work through what that is. So it, it's truly a partnership. Okay, good. I want to take the opportunity. Were there any questions from audience members? We got one here. And then one here. And will we be doing translation as well? Or? Yeah, and if there's, that's a good point. If there are live translations, so if anyone has a question in um, Mandarin, we can t take that as well. All right, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I just want to know um, how EMC will uh, redefine your uh, engagement with the distributors and uh, First tier partners means a uh, uh, value added result because uh, these two uh, types of uh, partnership right. is different. Yep. And when I uh, see, I saw your uh, presentations, that I just uh, saw that uh, uh, the difference is just on the, on, on the, the level uh, silver, uh, gold, and platinum, and how you will posi uh, reposition themselves mm -hmm. with, uh, between uh, these two uh, partnership model. Thanks. You bet. Great question. Thank you. So. We will have a new distribution track within this partner program. Um, we're taking, I think, a much more thoughtful approach and clear approach with distribution going forward. So we have a, a very clear segmentation strategy in the VAR community and where we think we'll be working with VARs uh, on a direct go-to-market basis and where we want distribution to cover um, additional territory and partners. So I think what we haven't had in the past is that segmentation and that ability to structure the engagement with distribution and reward them accordingly for carrying that unmanaged uh, population. So coming shortly, you'll get news and information around a new distribution track, structured and set up to reward you for the value distribution brings around um, activation, recruitment, enablement, and productivity. So we've been very clear about that. Um, on, the, on the reseller side, we'll have a mixture of direct engagement and then through distribution. Did that answer your question? Yep, I think you're on now. Oh. Uh, in relation with the uh, uh, the level of partnership that you mentioned, is uh, silver, gold, and platinum. Is it uh, just applied for uh, the SI or also applied for the distributor? 
uh, it'll apply primarily for the value-added reseller. Uh, on the distribution side, we'll have a variation of the silver, gold, and platinum, but we'll still have levels, if you will, within that track. Okay, thank you. You bet. And if you have any other questions, find me afterwards. I'm happy to spend time with you. We, we had a gentleman over there as well. Yeah, um, I like the program. I, I, but to, my question is around the, the, the five criteria. Yes. And the one in the middle, the, the marketing one, yes. is that I, I, I think in the past sometimes, um, because you work separately sometimes, we tend to confuse customers rather than give them clarity. Mm. And do you think that that part of the program is designed to make us work a lot closer together so we can get more clarity for customers in what is a fast-changing world, world, which means we'll accelerate sales cycles? So optimally, the answer is yes. I think practically, there are a couple steps we need to go through. Um, one is a, is a competency. And, and I say that with, all, with respect to all of us. So we've had to undergo a pretty big change at EMC in how we market. Because the notion of us sitting together and uh, devising a push approach to the marketplace uh, through direct marketing or email or events or conferences is not really the route to market anymore from a marketing standpoint. About 60% of your clients today are going to find you and find your products and services before you even know it. So clients are out there today doing a ton of research on what they want to buy and who they want to buy it from before they even contact you. So we have to change how we market together. I think that's the first step, yeah? Second step is we think we're going to have a much clearer engagement by virtue of how we are segmenting our partner approach, number one. Number two is I think you should expect and see EMC to take an ever-increasing position of driving more of that awareness or branding approach to the marketplace in conjunction with partners which should provide that clarity. We have not really done, excuse me, we've not done that in the past, uh, I think, programmatically. And that's something we'd like to change so we can establish a value proposition and a point of view in the market together and then get there together coherently. So absolutely. Did I answer your question? Yep, okay. And no, there's not more money. <laughs> Were there any other questions from the audience? So how many of you are EMC partners today? Great. How many of you had been briefed on the program? Just curious. A few? OK. Uh, if you have more questions, come find me, first of all. For those of you that aren't EMC partners, come find us either right here or in our booth. We're happy to talk to you about, again, why I think there's never been a better time to be a, a partner with EMC than right now. And we'd love to have that conversation with you. Okay. Great. Hey, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Fred. Take care.